Welcome to A-Level and AP Physics. In today's lesson, we will discuss past paper questions from May June 2023, paper 4, variant 2. In today's lesson, our main focus will be on gravitational field. We will discuss a beautiful question about Newton's law of gravitation in this lesson. As always we do, we will discuss this question in detail so you can improve your conceptual understanding of gravitational field and also you can have better understanding of this type of questions. Let's study together, let's improve together. In today's lesson, we are talking about May June 2023, paper 4, variant 2. Total time for this exam is 2 hours and you need to answer all questions on this paper. And total mark for this paper is 100. On second page of exam paper, some important data is given to you. So if you need value of any constant, you can come to second page to find value of any constant you need for some calculations in your exam. On next page, some important formulae are also given to you. So if you need any formula, you can come to this page or if you want to double check any formula, you can also come to the second page. On one side, you can see formulae from AS physics are given to you. And on the other side, formulae from A2 physics are given to you. Question one part A says state Newton's law of gravitation. And this is a typical question. Almost in every paper, if there is any question about gravitational field, they will ask you to state Newton's law of gravitation. So it's very important to understand how to state Newton's law of gravitation in a proper way. So let's try to understand how we can state this one in a proper way. First of all, imagine that we have two masses. Imagine that this is mass M1 and here we have another mass this is mass m2 and let's say the distance between these two masses is equal to d or we can say distance is equal to r so this is the distance between these two masses we can also draw this one in our proper way so you can see here so let me redraw this one so you can see the better picture of this so here we have two point masses and the distance between these two distance between the centers is d so in this case simply we can say the gravitational force between these two masses will be directly proportional to the product of these two masses and the gravitational force between these two masses will be inversely proportional of d square inversely proportional of d square or we can say f is proportional to 1 over d square so we have one point here you have to mention here and the second one is this point but the third point most of the time student they don't mention and that is newton's law of gravitation this is only valid for point masses only valid for point masses so in your answer you have to mention point masses point mass not only means that the size is very small we can also treat spherical object if the size of the spherical object is small as compared with the distance between two spherical objects we can also treat as point masses as most of the planet are spherical in shape and also the distance between them is very large so we can treat them as point masses and we can use newton's law of gravitation now let me show you the answer how you can state newton's law of gravitation in a proper way so this is how you can state newton's law of gravitation so in your answer you have to mention two points the first point you have to say gravitational force between two point masses very important point masses you have to mention is directly proportional to the product of their masses means this is point one and inversely proportional to the square of the separation so this is point two and third point we have already mentioned here so point masses so this has to be in your answer part b says a satellite is in a circular orbit around a planet the radius of the orbit is capital r and period of the orbit is capital t the planet is a uniform sphere so it simply means that we can treat as a point mass uniform sphere use newton's law of gravitation to show that r and t are related by this equation where capital m is the mass of the planet and g is the gravitational constant so first of all we can sketch in this case we can imagine this one is the planet mass of this one is capital m and we can also imagine satellite and mass of satellite is small m and it is given to us that orbital radius this orbital radius is equal to capital r 
and this satellite is orbiting in a circle around planet so we need to understand as the satellite is orbiting in a circle so the centripetal force in this case is provided by the gravitational force fc so fc is provided by force of gravity provided by force of gravity and fc is equal to m r omega square and gravitational force is capital g capital m small m over r square so we are using small r square so we can replace small r because it is given to us orbital radius is capital r so let me rewrite this one so orbital radius is capital r so we can simply write down here m r omega square this is divided by r square this is the gravitational force now simply we can cancel this mass with this mass it simply means that mass of satellite doesn't matter so from here we can write down omega square this one will be equal to g capital m divided by so here we have this is r cube omega we need to understand omega this is equal to 2 pi over t this is the angular velocity 2 pi over t so simply we can replace this one by 2 pi over t square so here we have g capital m divided by r cube so we can write down this is for pi square divided by t square and this is equal to g capital m divided by r cube so gm and t square has to be on one side and 4 pi square times r cube has to be on the other side so if we cross multiply simply we can say 4 pi r cube this is equal to gm and here we have t square because here we have square so this is gm times t square so this is how you need to prove this one and this question has two marks the first mark is the m mark if you have written this one you will get one mark then the second mark is the answer mark if you have got this right answer you will get two marks part c says the earth may be considered to be a uniform sphere of mass 5.98 times 10 to 24 kgs and radius 6.37 times 10 to 6 meters a geostationary satellite is in orbit around the earth use the expression in b to determine the height of the satellite above the earth surface so it's a very nice question is a basic question about gravitational field but any question in physics when you start solving always sketch the diagram because diagram define the universe is very important so let me write down here diagram in physics is very important because diagram define the universe define the universe I mean with simple sketch you can see what is happening in the universe so we can say define the universe so very important one so always start by sketching so in this case we can imagine this is our beautiful planet and we can also imagine the radius of this one is small r and we can also imagine we have small satellite here mass of satellite we have already said is small m and the mass of the planet is capital m and in the question we have already said that orbital radius I mean this radius this is equal to capital r orbital radius this is equal to capital r but now we need to understand this one this is this is equal to small r and height from the surface of the planet we can take this one is equal to h and this is what we need to find out in the last question we have already discussed that 4 pi square r cube this expression we have derived in the last part this is equal to g capital m times t square so from here first of all we can find value of r if we have value of r we can say r will be equal to h plus small r and small r we have so this is the small r so from here then we can find out h this will be equal to capital r means orbital radius minus the radius of the planet so in this case we need to find out first of all capital r and capital r simply we can write down this one will be equal to g capital m t square divided by 4 pi square and the power of this one 1 over theory 
now simply we need to plug in values so first of all we have g value of g is 6.67 this is a constant times 10 to minus 11 newton meter square per kg square and next one we have mass of the planet this is given to us we have 5.98 so let me remove these packets maybe you will get confused with these things a little bit so this is multiply 5.98 times 10 to 24 and times we have the time period of geostationary satellite time period of geostationary satellite is equal to 24 hours so we can say 24 and 1 hour as 60 minute and 60 seconds so this is so time we can write on here so this will be 24 times 60 times 60 square of this and divided by 4 pi square we have 4 and we have pi square so this is constant so simply we can write it 4 pi square so first of all you have to write down this and then you have to take cube root mean 1 over theory and if we solve this one we will get r in this case this will be equal to 4.22 times 10 to 7 meters now simply we can write on value of capital r 4.22 times 10 to 7 minus radius of earth that is given to us 6.37 times 10 to 6 and if we solve this one we will get our final answer that is 3.6 times 10 to 7 meters means this is the height so we can write down here now so this is 3.6 times 10 to 7 meters so this is the final answer and this question has three marks the first mark you will get if you have got the value of capital R you will get one C mark and the second C mark you will get if you have written this expression you will get 1c mark and the final mark is the answer mark if you have got the right answer is a simple question but this type of questions are very important from gravitational field part d says another satellite is in a circular orbit around the earth with the same orbital radius and period as the satellite in c satellite in c was geostationary satellite so this is you need to find out from part c in part c we have discussed geostationary satellite so the time period for geostationary satellite is 24 hours or we can say this is 24 times 60 times 60 seconds because one hour has 60 minutes and one minute has 60 seconds for part d1 we need to calculate the angular speed of the satellite in this orbit give a unit with your answer angular speed so it simply means that imagine that we have the satellite this is the satellite this is the orbit of the satellite this satellite is moving in this orbit and we have our planet that is located here question is simply asking us imagine that this satellite move from this point to this point just imagine it move from point a let's say to point b so this is point b and time taken let's say is equal to one second so what is the angle covered by this satellite this theta so this is what we need to find out angular speed means angular displacement over time so how we can calculate angular speed angular speed simply is equal to 2 pi over capital t this is the angular displacement and this is the time period means in one time period the angular displacement is equal to 2 pi and this is the time taken and so simply we can write on 2 pi divided by we have the time period time period is 24 times 60 times 60 so if we solve this one we will get 7.3 times 10 to minus 5 radians per second so if the time taken is one second the angle traveled by angular displacement traveled by this satellite will be equal to 7.3 times 10 to minus 5 so this is meaning of angular speed so simply we can write down here we have 7.3 times 10 to minus 5 and the unit of 
angular speed is radians per second so we can write on here radians per second and this question has two marks if you have written this formula you will get one mark and if you have got the right answer you will get an other mark second part says despite having the same orbital period orbit of this satellite is not geostationary state two ways in which the orbit of this satellite could be different from the orbit of satellite in c or you can say geostationary satellite in order to answer this question we can write down few points about geostationary satellite geostationary first thing for geostationary is that it has to move in the same direction as direction of rotation of planet about its own axis mean it has to move from west to east so this one is very important from west to east and the second geostationary satellites are above equator or we can say they are in the equatorial plane above equator above equator so let's try to understand this one with the help of this animation so you can see if you look at direction of rotation of our planet about its axis and if you look at direction of rotation of these satellites these pink and red circle they are representing satellite you will see they are in the same direction from my side you will see or from your side you will see they are rotating anti-clockwise now let's try to answer this question so we can say this satellite maybe is from east to west so one thing we can say if it is in the equatorial plane but it is from east to west so that cannot be geostationary satellite mean satellite will not appear stationary to an observer on the planet surface so this can be the one point and second it is also possible it is not above equator maybe it is above pole so this is kind of polar satellite so maybe it is orbiting like this so we can say maybe it's a polar satellite or we can say it is in polar orbit so we can say maybe it is polar satellite and for this question you need to write on only two points so you can mention one point you can mention the second point now let me show you the answer how you can write down your answer so this is how you can write down your answer in your answer you can mention these two points from east to west you can say orbit is not equatorial or you can say orbit is polar orbit so that's all for today's lesson we have discussed some beautiful points about gravitational field and this question is a typical type of question from gravitation field so understanding of this question is very important i hope this video was helpful and i have already uploaded paper for one solution you can find on my channel and remaining questions from this paper i will try to upload as soon as possible meantime if you have any questions from paper 4 or any other paper from cambridge a level physics igcse physics please leave your questions in comments and i will try to answer as soon as possible see you in next video